think about this with Q and A, right? Yes. Where is it? I know there's a question about confirmation. 
Yes, why is confirmation important? So confirmation is important because when I was six months old, when I was baptized, when I was baptized, I don't remember. I didn't know what was happening. I was aware of very little as a six month old. You were too. So when most of us were baptized as infants, we really didn't know what happened. But there comes that time in which you have to take responsibility for your own faith journey. In the Hebrew tradition, the Jewish tradition, uh, how many of you have friends who are Jewish? A lot of you. And so uh, this is the best way to describe it is uh, many of your friends that have had a bar that stuff or a bat mitzvah. Is that correct? Have you ever been to a bar or a bat mitzvah? Synagogue, we have two people. I always had a big party beforehand. We always told our daughters, you can go to the party with you. Let's go to the service before. Because that's what it's about. So the confirmation process in, in, the, in the Christian church is you or I finally saying yes to the commitment that our parents did. And we take our own responsibility for our faith. Okay. Somebody submitted the question, how do I know if I am called to be a pastor? You know, uh, this happens in a lot of different ways. So I, I can tell you my call story just quickly. I've told this so many times in North Texas. I know some of the adults have heard it. I don't know what you have. So uh, I can remember being four or five years old and saying one day uh, as we left the church uh, to my father, I think I want to be a preacher. Now, every Sunday we also went to my father's mother's house where his sister and brother-in-law lived, my cousins lived, and we all brought by there. We didn't necessarily have lunch together, but my dad walked and said, and this is what he sometimes called me, a little man wants to be a preacher. And so, um, you know, everyone's small, but he asked me, what does it mean to be a preacher? I was five years old. I didn't. I was just trying to figure out what it meant to be a And, but I knew that I wanted to be, and then one year, uh, about a year later, I said to my dad, uh, and we sat on the back of the My dad sat with my brother and me, but uh, that was than anything else, and truth were done. And uh, I said afterwards, I said, I don't want to be a preacher. He said, well, I want to know what you want to be, but I want to know why you don't want to be a preacher. I said, you know, I've been watching these guys. And all of them are bald, and I'm not, I don't want to lose my hair. <laughs> I don't want to lose my hair. I know, I know you won't, but anyway, so what I'm going to say is, is that I think that was sort of the first thing and I can remember junior high thinking I was going to be a United Methodist pastor, a Methodist pastor at that time. And I remember thinking I was going to do that. When I graduated from high school on the University of Texas so that I could get a government degree and go to law school. And you know, then I got attached to church. And her preaching was just unbelievably good. It's still the best preaching I've heard Sunday after Sunday after Sunday at First Methodist Church in downtown Austin. And I just think that this is a continual intersection of a spiritual life that was really drawing me to a, to a different calling or vocation than I was beginning to think And so I, don't, I didn't hear really any voices, all the voices. I just knew that it was right. For sure. So then the question that was submitted is, how do I decide where to worship each Sunday? How do I decide where to worship every Sunday? I think the question was asked for For them? For them? them? So, when I was growing up, we went to church every Sunday. There was, there was um, I need to tell you, there was not anything open on Sunday, even through junior high and high school. I know that sounds strange. I'll never forget the first time I saw a shop that were open on Sunday. I thought, something's changing. But what I want to say is, is, we just went to church every Sunday. We didn't have a choice for that. We went to, to a Methodist church every Sunday with my parents. The first time I chose where or if I was going to go to church was when I was in college. First year, I'm going, to, I'm going to be very open and transparent. I didn't go to church every Sunday. I went to church when I came home uh, for a weekend or for holidays. But the second year of college, somehow there was this void, and this may be part of the call. It was a call, and I thought, I think I can go to church. And I ended up going to the church I mentioned. It. It's the last time I ever, I never did, that's the only time I've ever chosen which church I was going to go to. Because I want you to think about it. Well, once I became a minister, a bishop decided what church I was going to go to. <laughs> and then when I became a bishop, the Episcopal Committee decided where I was going to go to. And uh, so I don't know how to decide, but I think it's 
not only were you feel comfortable because I had people coming, they just want to find peace in their church. And I thought, well, if you follow Jesus, there are a lot of times in your life that are not going to be peaceful because you don't really like it. And so, so I wanted to, I didn't want to go find a place like this challenge, which I felt alone, what they ignored. And so I went to home chosen one. There's a question that's kind of related. Is why should you go to church every week? I, uh, I had a seminary professor who said you the Christian faith and church talks too much and should. It's what you should do. You should do this or you should not do this. I don't know that I would use the word should. But this is what I've used in my mind. It's why I'm it's just the, it's the rhythm of the week itself. And I think it's helpful. It reminds me I'm not in this life alone, trying to make my own way. But there are a crowd of people who really care about me, or I can challenge by something that the preacher says, or there's something beautiful in the liturgy that's the spoken words, or there's something beautiful in the I, I, I know that something's missing. I know that. I may be one of the last generations that one who went to church every Sunday. But I do think it does a rhythm of time. And I need to tell you that Christianity and Christian faith is not a solitary doing. You can't just do it by yourself. It was not meant to be done by yourself, it was meant to be done 